Karen Bryant for MMA Heat. I'm here with UFC President Dana White. And Dana, is there any sense of wanting to really deliver on this card after UFC 149 up there in uh, Calgary? Yeah, I always want to deliver. You know, I always want to deliver no matter what happens. If we just had a killer card uh, on, on uh, 149 Calgary, I'd want this one to, to deliver too. Um, but yes, the answer is yes. The long-winded answer is yes. And let's hope they don't put up gymnastics or whatever on Saturday night against the fight. But, but literally, you, you, you did allude to the fact that anything that serves 18 to 30, 35-year-olds or 49-year-olds is your competition. So how big of a monster do you think the, UF, the, the Olympics are going to be? Yeah, they're bigger than I thought. I actually, I actually was talking some smack. Uh, I was like, the Olympics, whatever, and holy shit, they're pulling some amazing numbers. Uh, so we'll see what happens. You know, it is what it is. It is what it is. And on Saturday night, you said somebody who has a great performance could get the next shot at the winner of Jones or Henderson. If you could res uh, just talk about the response you got when you first initially just said it was either Shogun or Brandon, and why you then opened it up to the other two. Yeah, people went crazy. Uh, they, 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 they didn't love that idea. So, you know, the fans spoke and I answered. But is it that they didn't love the idea of Brandon specifically? Yeah, I, I think th that they didn't love the idea of Brandon, number one. And number two, um, why not Machida? Why not Machida? Why not Bader? And, uh, I, I, you know, I agreed. I said, okay, so here's what we'll do. The guy who wins the most impressively on Saturday night will get the next shot. What I think is some interesting storylines, granted, John Jones has already defeated all of them, but Ryan Bader said something interesting about the fact that if he got to fight Hendo, he's fighting somebody who was a legend that he looked up to. And there, there are actually a lot of great storylines in the mix there with either Henderson or Jones. I agree. You know, people start to think because, you know, Jones has been so dominant over the last year and a half that there's no other fights out there for him. It's what they've been saying about Anderson Silva um, since 2006. So uh, as these fights unfold on Saturday, believe me, People will be, there will be people uh, rumbling on Monday about somebody. Is Nick Diaz going to get to fight Anderson Silva? No. No. All right, so you lost at 170 uh, to Carlos Condit to, for, you know, you're fighting for a shot at the 170 pound. Losing, uh, you know, at 170 does not give you the opportunity to fight the pound for pound best fighter in the world at 185. You know, would Nick Diaz versus Anderson Silva be fun and interesting and whatever? Absolutely. Anytime Nick Diaz or Anderson Silva steps in there, it's fun and exciting, but it just makes no sense in any universe. Though he will be welcomed back when his suspension is up. Oh, yeah, believe me, I'm excited for Diaz to get through this thing and get back. What about Chris Weidman? Is he looking at a chance against Anderson Silva? Yeah, Weidman, uh, we'll see what happens. You know, uh, Anderson's not going to fight again until after the, uh, the beginning of next year. So we'll see what happens. Let's talk about Tough. You, you mentioned that the show had started to film. Are there changes for this upcoming season, or what's going on with Ultimate yeah, Fight? it's not live. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> that didn't know. And, what, you know, what's, what's the true story there? Did you feel that it just didn't deliver on the hope that you, you had for it? Or, you know, why did you decide to go back to the old form? Well, I think what happened is, again, listening to the fans. I think the fans wanted more of the – you couldn't tell the stories that you could tell when the thing is taped. Personally, I wanted somebody to call the fights. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I heard a lot of that, too, which was, you know, I, I, I just, I would never do that on Tough. It just, it doesn't make sense. Well, it was weird. It was, I understood the rawness, and the, I, I, I liked that sort of voyeuristic feeling, but at the same time, I kind of felt that it, it just need, it just could have helped to have a little bit of, I don't know, something else going on. With it. Yeah, it was interesting. That's why I say, when we did the live format, everybody had an opinion, and everybody, but the, the, the biggest one, the one that stood out the most was that they want... They want to see more stories. They want to see what's going on. You getting along with Roy? No. No, Roy and I are not getting along. <gasps> all right, Dana. Well, we are all going to get along on Saturday night. It's going to be a great show, I'm sure. Thanks for bringing it back to Los Angeles, and uh, I hope you have a great night on Saturday. Thank you. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, baby. See you